Java has aged like fine, milk, and one of the reasons is that it's object-oriented, and OOP isn't ideal. And if you really hate everything Java has to offer, even curly braces and variables you can change, then you're gonna love the functional world, which similarly to communism has no state and no classes. One of the most famous slash infamous functional languages is Haskell, which not only is communist, but also looks funny. Given my most popular videos, my audience loves watching me torture myself and spread misinformation about a video game. So today I'm torturing myself, using Code Crafters. I have an affiliate link in the comments, but they didn't review the video before uploading, so I'm gonna be giving my honest opinion as I make this video. Here's a suggestion, dark mode. Speaking of not reviewing videos, I always wanted to make a ridiculous sponsorship segment, so... Oh man. My f***ing code won't fucking compile. If only there was a platform that could help me improve my programming skills and had a name that starts with code and ends with crafters. Code Crafters is a platform that can help you improve your programming skills by recreating things such as Git, Redis, Docker, Squeal Lite, and more. While their PR department might have slightly questionable standards, the rest of the company is great, creating a fine selection of languages you can develop with, such as all of the languages currently on screen. You get a list of stages for every project, each with a couple of instructions and tests. And if you're stuck you can use user hints, screencasts, and code examples. All of those majestic features and more at the link below, which also by using my link helps me build rubbish. Rubbish is, is across the pond for sure, Bruh. if you're wondering. I don't think I'm getting any more sponsorship that aren't sponsorship offers. Anyway, if you don't know what functional programming is, here's a basic introduction to functional programming from before I actually tried Haskell. Every function is pure, so it will always produce the output given the same input. There is no state either, everything is immutable. Functions are first-class objects, I mean, functions are important structures, so you can treat it like any other value. You can take functions as input, and return functions. We don't have statements, only expressions. There's a lot of concepts that came from functional languages, type inference, fancy enums, pattern matching, lambda expressions, etc. There's also monads, a mythical concept which absolutely no one can explain. So I first did the classics, I mean, the quintessentials, download the Haskell compiler, notice I didn't install OBS, make a hello world program, notice you was in your home folder and now your home folder is a Haskell project. Wait as the Haskell vs code extension tried to install Haskell again and failed twice, try installing Haskell for the third time, try installing Haskell for the fourth time, get my headphones, listen to poorly compressed portal radio music for 10 hours, you know, the quintessentials. I was browsing code crafters, and I found someone whose job is being a reddit user, which is interesting. Anyways I decided to do the git challenge. It asked for how good I am at Haskell, and it recommended using another service first. However they're not giving me banknotes, so I'm gonna skip that. Code Crafters gave me a repo to clone, so I did, and then the Haskell extension tried installing Haskell for the fifth time, which is certainly interesting. Anyways, I had to clone a repo since for every time I push my changes, Code Crafters runs a bunch of tests, to make sure that you're actually building your own git, and not doom. Anyway, you know I said I would completely skip learning Haskell before making the challenge. That was a mistake. I asked chat Guput, and this part creates a function, I think, functions are called without parentheses, plus plus appends lists, which in this case is appending two strings since they're arrays of characters, and this HTML operator gets the correct slash, backward slash on Windows and forward slash on normal platforms. As that comment implies, I simply had to uncomment that code to pass the first stage, so now it's time for the first real stage, reading a blob object. In this stage, you'll add support for reading a blob using the git cat file command. I never heard of that before, so I looked at the code examples, and you know, might be a good idea to learn the basics of Haskell. Or you could just, you know, guess it, which is exactly what I did. But then I noticed I can read code examples from the same languages, which is convenient. So first I need to figure out how to use multiple files, that's pretty important I think. You put module file name where at the top and then import file name everywhere else. I then got the error, pass error on input, which is about as helpful as something went wrong, try again later. My brain was already fried, so I called it a day. 
The next day I noticed I kinda corrupted the git repo, so it would be a good idea to make another challenge, preferably something I can't corrupt. I decided to do the hut up server challenge, as Haskell is enough of a challenge for me, and I never did networking stuff before. This challenge is also free until March 31st, which is probably before I finish this video, so there's that. I was starting to slightly kind of mayhaps understand Haskell. I even did the impossible, figure out what a monad is. You have a function that takes the current environment, the monad, and return a new version of the environment. Now the I had done the impossible of uncommenting comments to pass the first stage, it was time to make the second stage, two is after one, that's how math works. In this stage, you'll respond to a hutup request with a 200 OK response. I just copied a code example. The next stage is responding to hutup request with 404. Never mind, I don't understand Haskell. Looking at the code makes my brain hurt. So it's the next day, my brain instantly exploded. Functions without parentheses are certainly unreadable. In a language like Rust or CPP I can at least miserably fail and understand at least half of the code, but Haskell is a whole new level of being hard. Now, personally, in my very own opinion, I am a big fan of sanity, and the title says I can stop when my sanity is gone, and my sanity is gone. However I didn't really try code crafters, so I decided to do the hut up request in Rust. So I can at least miserably fail and understand at least half of the code, but Haskell is a whole new level of whoopsie, accidentally corrupted the fabric of reality. Who would ever write this? I am going to force whoever wrote this to listen to Baby Shark for 10 hours straight. I am just reading the script by the way, open parentheses, I'm not getting any more sponsors that aren't sponsors, close parentheses. So I cloned the repo that Code Crafters made, and Rust is just annoying and unreadable as I remembered. Pretty fun though, except I miserably failed due to the borrowed checker not shutting the fuck up. So check out Code Crafters, it's pretty cool to be honest in my humble opinion no cap for real for real.